viewers, this is OBN Horn of Africa, and uh, this is our special edition. Today, I have a guest. My guest is from Ghana. He is Pan-Africanist who believes that Africa must be united as one state. He is the director for uh, media and publicity at uh, Kwame Nkrumah Ideological Institute. He is Mr. Kwame Gonza. Thank you very much for joining us first and welcome to the program. Thank you so much, my brother. And let me start with this question, Mr. Kwame, as you are a Pan-Africanist and the, the past generation, you know, struggle and joined the, the Pan-African movement to just free their country from colonization. And today, what are the Pan-Africanists are doing in defending the sovereignty of their country in Africa? Oh, thank you so much uh, for that question. Um, uh, what the Pan-Africanists are doing today uh, is not uh, different uh, from what was done in the 19, starting the period of 1945 to 1947 up to 1957, when Ghana gained its independence from uh, Britain, and then consequently uh, the, the formation of uh, the Organization of African Unity, which was spearheaded by uh, Ethiopia in 1963 in Addis Ababa. So the Pan-Africanists are engaged in the same struggle, and that is the struggle of seeing that the African people all over the continent and in the diaspora can be able to exercise their freedom and self-determination and so that they can continue to be uh, independent as a people, as, as full human beings. Because uh, in the past, and even in some cases today, uh, uh, the colonialists have come up and uh, they have tried to undermine, to undermine the African people all over the world. All over the world, we see these things uh, in Africa, whereby uh, we have these interventionist policies uh, from west from the western world especially led by the united states uh, and its european allies uh, you know all the western countries they try to intervene in the affairs of the african people so the struggle is very huge uh, which the pan africans are, are engaged in right now and it is the same struggle which they were engaged in in the 19 40s, 1950s, and 1960s, where, where you can talk of people like uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, you can talk of people like uh, uh, Patrice El Mumba of Congo, you can talk of people like uh, Emperor Haile Selassie, you can talk of Abdul Gamal Nasser, who was a Pan Africanist during that period in Egypt, you can talk of Ben Ali, you know, Ben Bembela, uh, so of Algeria. These are all people who are engaged in the Pan African struggle. And today, we are engaged as Pan Africanists in this Pan Africanists in the same uh, type of struggle of liberating the continent from uh, colonialism. And to go back a little bit, uh, uh, Ethiopia, for the case of Ethiopia itself, it has been looked at by Africans all over the world, even the African diaspora. When I speak of the African diaspora, I'm talking of people who are of African descent, whether they are living in the Caribbean, Jamaica, Haiti the United States, all over the world. These people and even the Africans on the continent, they take their inspiration from Ethiopia because Ethiopia is one of the world's most, you know, oldest continuing civilization. And Ethiopia was not colonized. So Ethiopia has been looked at for a very long time as uh, the symbol of hope, the symbol of resilience of the African people, the symbol of freedom, the symbol of self-determination. So this is the struggle in which the, uh, the African people are engaged in of defending the sovereignty of Africa. You said Ethiopia will not colonize and will not be colonized forever. And uh, my second question is, are African countries defending Ethiopia today? I don't mean all African countries are not, but does Ethiopia, you know, deserve such kind of pressure from, from uh, you know, Western countries, which seems, you know, neo-colonialism. What do you say on this? Um, actually, 
uh, just like any other African country, uh, Ethiopia does not deserve this. And as Africans all over the continent, we, we should be engaged in this struggle of defending Ethiopia. And it has been, it has been the case, actually. Uh, when you remember in July, uh, 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 Prime Minister Abiy uh, moved around the Nile Basin countries while Egypt was going to the United Nations. Uh, the Prime Minister Abiy was in Uganda, he was in Kenya, he was in Rwanda, he was in Congo. So all these countries, they are giving support to Ethiopia. And it is, again, up to us, the, 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 the Pan-Africanists, to increase and advocate more for the support of Ethiopia against these neocolonial, you know, the neocolonialist pressures. Just to remind you, um, in the 1960s, there is a statement which uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah made. Uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah said that uh, imperialism and colonialism does not change in substance, but it changes only in form. So what did he mean by this statement? Uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah meant that the reason why the Europeans came to Africa, these Europeans, when I speak, when I speak about the Europeans, I mean the Americans, the old Europe, uh, who came and colonized Africa. The reason why they came here, it, it was because they wanted raw material access you know, to, to Africa. They wanted the, the access to, to, to the raw materials of Africa so that they can develop their industry. And now what he is saying, uh, Dr. Kwame Nkuma in the 60s is that the substance of colonialism does not change. It changes only in form. So when you go back to uh, the, 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 the 15th century, when Europe came to Africa, they came, they wanted the resources and the people, and they took our people uh, from the continent. And that was slavery. And after slavery was abolished by the Africans, these people, they changed the form of achieving their goals and they changed to colonialism. Now, when we fought against colonialism uh, to which uh, uh, Ethiopia was never colonized, they changed it to neo-colonialism, whereby they instituted Organizations like the World Food Program, United Nations, World Bank, IMF, all these organizations to be able to achieve the same goal of exploiting Africa. And I see that this is the struggle in which uh, the African people right now are engaged and all the support is necessary. I would say, and I would call all the African people all over the world, all over the continent and those in the diaspora that they need to come up and defend Ethiopia because we cannot allow neocolonialism to, uh, you know, to continue dominating Africa. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because when you look at the world, when you look at the advancement in technology, when you look at the advancement in, in knowledge and understanding of the world in which we live in, Africa has now, a, 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 Africa now has a literacy rate of around 65%, more than 65%. So we know more about the world. We know more about what, how the world was constructed, how these Western nations built their nations. They didn't build their nations on, uh, on freedom, on, on, on just economics, on trade. They built their economies on exploitation and especially of the African people. So this is what we cannot allow because we know more about the world. We know how they constructed their nations. We know how Europe was built. You know, we know how the United States was built. We know how China has been built. So we really don't need these Western nations to come here and tell us what to do. We don't need them to lecture us on anything. And this is what uh, the prime minister, I believe Abi, has been emphasizing that Africa should find its own solutions. He's echoing the same you know, notion, the same things which Dr. Kwame Nkrumah used it to say in the 1960s. And he said that it is evident that we must find an African solution to the African problem. And this is evident when you look at what uh, the prime minister Abiy has been doing. Well, while Egypt was running to the United Nations and the United States, the prime minister Abiy was going to the African Union. He was moving all over the Nile Basin. He was moving all over Africa to seek support of Africa in order for us to, uh, to be able to solve at this problem of the rebels and terrorists who have come up. The United States doesn't negotiate with terrorists. 
in, in its country. And even it looks for terrorists outside the country, outside the United States, in the Middle East. So why is it intervening? The United States and its allies and their fake media, why are they intervening in Ethiopia while Ethiopia is trying, and Ethiopia and Africans are trying to solve their own problems within their countries? We do not intervene in the affairs of the United States. And so we, if we are not intervening in the affairs of the United States and how it is conducting, it is conducting its internal affairs and even attacking other countries, like recently it attacked the, the African country of Libya. In the 1993 period, it attacked Somalia. So we cannot continue to allow this because like I said in the beginning, we know so much about the world now that we cannot allow to be blackmailed. As Africans, we will defend Ethiopia from Ghana, you know, from all the Nile Basin countries, uh, Uganda, if, if, you, if you have been following, the Ugandan president has called um, a, a meeting, a conference on the 16th uh, of this month uh, so that they can be able to discuss this conflict. So you can see that the African people are, are responding uh, to this blackmail and they will not allow. The African people also are pushing back and they are defending Ethiopia. So I would call on to the Ethiopian people that they should stand firm. They should stand firm and defend Ethiopia because they have all the support of the African people. The Western media and its mechanizations, uh, uh, you know, and all their countries and, and their blackmail, we cannot accept it. We cannot accept it as Africans because this is our land all the way from the north to the south, from the east to the west of Africa, and all the islands is our land. And we cannot allow these Western powers who are bent on exploiting the continent to continue. We cannot allow them because we have the youngest population in Africa now. In, in the world, we have the youngest population with 70% of, of the youth in, you know, the people in Africa, they are youth. So we don't need security. We don't need any knowledge from them. We don't need anything from them really because we have everything we need. We can handle our security on this continent because if you look at the world, we have the youngest population all over the world. So that means we are in a much better position to defend Africa, whether it is military, whether it is economically, whether it is intellectually. And that is what we have come out uh, to prove uh, today in this defense of Ethiopia and uh, in its conducting of its affairs. And, and do you think that the neo-colonialists or the imperialists have fear of African unity? Do you think that way? or other way? Yes, from, uh, from long ago after independence, uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and Emperor Haile Selassie, when they met in 1963 in Addis Ababa, they made this clear. And in those speeches which were given, you can single out uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's speech which he gave, and he warned of the danger of this unity in Africa. And even Emperor Haile Selassie warned about this danger. Now, what was the danger? The danger was that if Africa remains divided, then it will be easy for these colonialists and these neo-colonialists. When I speak of neo-colonialists, I'm talking about the United States and its institutions, which are designed to exploit other countries and cause war and cause chaos and cause death all over the world. And this, we have to reject this. We we cannot accept this. And I repeat that we have to reject this blackmail with everything that we have as, as Africans. So the unity of Africa is feared very much. Why? Because Africa now will start taking center stage. Africa now will start becoming powerful because we have everything, like I said in, in the last question and I wish you asked, we have everything, we have enough resources in the, in the continent to be able to develop ourselves. Now they fear this self-reliance because the system they have been using is, is, is the neo-colonial system of blackmail, whereby they use the World Bank and the IMF. Now, when they see Africa becoming self-reliant and independent and being able to carry out its own affairs, its own finance, when, when I talk of its own finance, it, 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 when Africa is able to finance its own projects, this is a, a fear for them. You have seen recently that there has been economic depressions in the West, a lot of economic depressions. Uh, the, the economy is declining, for example, of the United States 
France, when you look at its economy, is contracting in the first period of the coronavirus last year, 2020, in the first period when the coronavirus hit, the United States economy contracted by almost 30%. France up to now is not, the economy is contracting, is not expanding. So they are looking for means, they are looking for means of survival because they are suffering. Look at Europe right now. Europe is disintegrating because of economic problems. They have been engaging in catastrophic economic policies and imposing it on their people. Now, what they are trying to do is they are trying to deflect they are trying to deflect uh, the anger which their people are putting up up to them, these uh, ruling class, the ruling class in, in the Western world. They are trying to deflect their anger to show that they care about Africa. But in Africa, we really don't need them. And like I say, we have to make it very clear that we really don't need them. So the, the unity of Africa, they fear it because once Africa is united, then it will take a very big position in the world affairs, geopolitically, and Africa will be able to finance its own, you know, infrastructure. It will be able to finance everything it needs, whether you are talking of roads, whether you are talking of railway systems, whether you are talking of dams, whether you are talking of industry. And Ethiopia, in this case, has led the way. When you are talking of the guard dam, the dam which has been constructed is the seventh biggest dam in the world, is the, seven, is the, is the biggest dam in Africa. So this is the fear because this dam was constructed with Ethiopian money. It was not borrowed from the IMF. Like I say, the IMF, they are institutions for blackmail. They are not institutions. IMF has never lifted any country out of poverty. The World Bank has never lifted any country out of poverty. And Ethiopia has seen this, the construction of, of an electric rail system in Ethiopia. So these are all the fears, the increase, the explosion in industry in Ethiopia. Because when you look at, uh, even from their own institutions like Bloomberg, from the data which was collected, Ethiopia now is the fastest growing economy in Africa, when, when you look at it. Because uh, Ethiopia has seen that we have to do this by ourselves. We don't need the World Bank or IMF to come and build anything for us. And this is the direction which Ethiopia has taken. So this direction, it will be an example to other African countries. This is the fear. Because African countries now have started realizing that we need to be independent and we need to be united and move in the direction uh, which is for the interest of the African people, whereby we improve the lives of the African people. I was in Ethiopia uh, last month. I passed through uh, Addis Ababa at the airport. And you could see that Ethiopia is the, is the hub, is the aviation hub of, of Africa, all over Africa. So these are the fears. Uh, Ethiopia has made so many, you know, advances. Yeah, yeah, it has made so many developments in the country, rail systems, dams, you know, in the aviation airlines. So it is leading the continent and it is setting a good example to the continent. And it is trying to bring together the continent. And just to tell you that the AU, the African Union headquarters is, is, is in Ethiopia. And Ethiopia is still the fastest growing economy in Africa, even in the world, even in the world, while other countries were contracting, the United States, Europe, all over Europe, the economies were contracting, African economies were growing. So they are trying to retain this control over African resources. And fortunately, fortunately, I'm very optimistic that the African people now, they are very awake. They are very aware of these uh, blackmails which these people want to carry out. Now we know so much. We know so much. There is so much information that we cannot allow them to blackmail us with with this kind of uh, you know fake news and fake statements and you know uncalled for concerns. You know these concerns we did not call them. So I think that uh, we are on track to defend uh, Africa with everything we we have and we have to move in the direction of African unity. Whether they oppose us, whether they do what, we have to move in the direction of African unity so that we can unify our continent, uh, defend our people all over the world, even those ones who are being killed in the streets of the United States. Black people are being killed in the streets of the United States. So people, our people are dying in the Mediterranean where, while they are leaving the continent. In Libya, they are going to, the, to Europe. They are trying to go to Europe because the United States, the Western world and its allies came and destroyed Libya. So our people now, they don't have where to go. So 
I'm optimistic that we can do this job and defend Africa and unify it. The stand of United States is, you know, it has a strong stand in fighting a terrorist group like Al-Shabaab, Al-Qaeda and Boko Haram. But when it comes to the TPLF in Ethiopia, they are on the side of the terrorist group. It's obvious their media outlets are broadcasting, you know, fake news against the sovereign country Ethiopia. Why America shifted its position to support the terrorist group, a group that is labeled as a terrorist by the House of People's Representatives here in Ethiopia. And, and actually, uh, thank you very much for, for that question. It's a very timely one. Uh, according to the United Nations Charter, it is illegal to intervene in the affairs of a sovereign state. So what the United States and its allies are doing through their propaganda media houses is illegal, is illegal according to the United Nations Charter. Ethiopia and Africa should be able to find its own solutions. It should be able to fight and terrorism. The government in Ethiopia, the prime minister's uh, government, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, was voted, it was voted democratically into power. So any efforts, any moves, you know, uh, directed towards sabotaging the government in Ethiopia is illegal according to the United Nations Charter. The support of rebels who want to overthrow a democratically elected government, a government which was elected and installed by the people, is illegal. Is illegal. And Africa, all Africa has to reject this. Africa has to reject this. The United States and its allies have special interests in Africa. And mostly those interests are economic. They want to exploit, they want to slow down even Africa in its development because Ethiopia now is the fastest growing economy in the world, one of the fastest growing economies in the world, the fastest in Africa. They are looking at slowing down Africa in its development because the growth and development of Africa, it means the decline, the decline of Europe and the United States and the Western world, the whole Western world. And we have to be resilient and we have to be firm in this defense of Africa. So the United States, it has always been an interventionist. When you go even, you spoke of uh, the Boko Haram, you spoke of uh, Al-Shabaab, you spoke of the, you know, in Iraq, ISIS and all this. But when you look at these countries also, the United States went there, it did not actually go there to, 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 to you know, to bring up uh, any form of freedom or to fight terrorists. It went there to exploit these countries. The United States, France, Germany, and all these European countries, Canada, Australia, all these band of countries which move in packs, they went there to exploit Iraqi's oil. They went to Afghanistan to exploit the country and kill innocent people in the name of democracy. And this type of democracy, which they are spreading of killing people, of saying they are spreading democracy while they are killing people, we don't want it in Africa. We must reject this outright. We cannot accept this kind of democracy of killing our people or supporting terrorists. So they went to the Middle East, created a lot of terrorists in Iraq, which is ISIS, Afghanistan, a chaos. And when they went and removed the government in Libya, those terrorists were able to penetrate through and come to Africa also. They came through Libya. They came up to Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, all the Sahel, Niger, Central African Republic. And now these terrorists have reached up to Mozambique. So this is a coordinated plot to take over Africa. And I must say this to the Africans, that we must be able to see through this. We should be able to see the plot which they are trying to carry out. This is a new colonialism. This is a new form of colonialism. And this is a neo-colonialism. 
at its highest stage. They are trying to take over Africa aggressively. And how do they do this? By supporting you know, the groups which will bring chaos and slow down the development of the continent. So this is what we are fighting against. We are fighting against a group of people who do not have any good intentions for Africa. These groups of the Europeans and, and their institutions and the Americans and their institutions, they do not have any good intentions for Africa. They speak a different thing and they do a different thing. So we must watch them because like we have said, we know so much about their countries now. We know how they are treating our black people in the United States, the Africans in the United States, we know how they are treating them. So when they come to us, we, sh we should point it out very well that we know you people, your actions, they are not incongruent with your words. You say a different thing and you do a different thing. You talk democracy and you bring chaos and you give them examples that look at the countries where you are from. Look at the countries, every country where you have intervened, in Vietnam, in Korea, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Libya, in Somalia, in 1993, they intervened in Somalia and Somalia has never recovered. What we are calling uh, Al-Shabaab, there are people who were dis dissatisfied with the United States and how it intervened in, 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 in Somalia and destroyed the country. Somalia was a very good country. These people, they intervened there and destroyed the country. And now they are still going around Africa to destroy other countries. And this is what they are bringing to Ethiopia. And we cannot accept this. We have to make it very clear that we cannot accept this as Africans all over the continent, whether from Uganda, whether from Niger, whether from Ivory Coast, whether from Chad, whether from South Africa, Congo, we have to defend Ethiopia because like I said, Ethiopia is the symbol of African resilience, is the symbol of African continuous civilization, one of the oldest civilizations in the world. How long they are going to aid us? You know, because there is neocolonialism is obvious in Africa. How long they are aiding us? How long they are hammered down? You know, people who are uh, speaking African proudness. How long do they do this? Yes, uh, they, 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 they always try to, uh, like I said, uh, to blackmail uh, the Africans, uh, those ones who speak up for Africa. If they cannot bribe you, uh, they use intimidation. Uh, they try to bribe you, first of all. They will come and try to deceive you. Uh, when they, they will start with deceiving you. And if they try to deceive you and you cannot be deceived, uh, like what uh, Prime Minister Abe has done, you, you see through their lies. Now they try to bring bribery. They try to bribe you. If you refuse to be bribed, they try to intimidate you and blackmail you. And that is what they are doing because they have those tools. They have their media. So they try to blackmail you and say you cannot manage the country. The country is going downwards. And this is what we are seeing in the Western media. And actually, to, to, to say something about the Western media, the Western media in their own countries, in their own countries, they don't trust them. Today, I was watching RT Russia, the Russian news network, Russia Today. And in the West, their own people, they don't trust CNN. Their own people, they don't trust the BBC. The rating of the BBC and all the Western media is below 35%. 35%. And when you come to Africa, the, wet, the rating of our African media actually is around 65%. So the people in the Western world, in America, in England, in Germany, in all Europe and Australia, Sky News, all those networks, BBC, CNN, the people in those countries, the white people, they don't trust those news networks. So the Africans should not watch those news networks and believe them because their own people, they don't trust them because of the lies, the lies they have been causing. So they try to blackmail you with their news networks. And now when they fail that, that is when they bring in a military intervention. And military intervention, it will be very difficult in Africa. So we want them that it will not be 
it will not be possible because we learned from what they have done in, in Somalia. We have learned from what they did in, in, in Libya. The, the United Nations itself has been in the Congo for the last 60 years. It has never solved any chaos. It has never solved any war. The United States, the, the United Nations has never solved, solved any war. It has never solved any chaos. So we cannot allow it. And I think that what the Prime Minister Abe did to expel the seven United Nations representatives in Ethiopia, it was right. Because when you look at what they are saying, that in September, 900 trucks of the World Food Program disappeared in Tigri. You know, they just disappeared. And they, this is what the United Nations says. This was reported in Al Jazeera. They disappeared. So you can see that these organizations are agents of chaos in the name of bringing support. I really don't think Ethiopia needs support from the United Nations. It needs support from the African Union and the Africans. If Ethiopia wants food, it will go and ask the Nile Basin countries. I think Ethiopia too has enough food. Ethiopia doesn't need food from the United Nations. United Nations has not solved problems in the Middle East. So how can it solve problems in, 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 in Ethiopia or in Africa where we can solve our own problems? It should go and solve problems in Palestine. It should go, United Nations should go and solve problems in Yemen where Saudi Arabia is killing the Yemen people, where Israel is killing the Palestinian people, where Israel is bombing, Israel is bombing the people, innocent people in Lebanon. They should go and solve problems in Syria. The Syrian people are hungry. So Ethiopia has enough friends in Africa to be able to solve whether it is hunger, whether it is what. I think Ethiopia has enough, enough to be able to do, you know, and, and, and be able to solve its own problem. And it has already demonstrated that. Economically, Ethiopia has demonstrated that. The economy in Ethiopia is growing rapidly. The industries are being established, working with China, Inter industries have been established. So this blackmail, they carry, out, carry it out on especially African leaders who are showing Africa the way. And African people have to stand at the back of these good leaders. And we at the Kwame Nkrumah Ideological Institute, we have already seen this. We have already seen that the Prime Minister, Abi Hamed, has been working very hard to see that Africa solves its own problem. People like uh, President Kagame, people like the late President Magufuli. These are the examples we want and making it clear that our leaders who are good leaders, we will stand at the back of them. And I'm very optimistic and I'm very encouraged that the East African community and the IGAD, now they are standing up and saying, we are going to solve our problems. And this is the future. The future is for the youth. And the youth, like I said, they constitute 70% of the African continent. They have to stand up because they are more educated. They are more knowledgeable about the world. They cannot allow people like Blinken, you know, uh, Secretary of, 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 of State, Blinken of the United States, people with average intelligence to come here and tell us what to do. When we are, we are on equal footing, we are with equal intelligence with these people. And when we talk of Ethiopia, it, it, we said United States has been around for just 300 years. Ethiopia has been here for thousands of years. So there's so much knowledge in, in Africa that these people, they don't have any knowledge with which they want to compare to ourselves and try to tell us what to do. So we must be firm in our belief. We must be resolute. We must be determined to fend off all this kind of criticism and blackmail that is coming from United States, its media houses, and reject all kind of blackmail that they are trying to do, all the Western world, the blackmail they are using. We reject it and we we'll continue to reject it because their media is already discredited, discredited around the world and even in their own countries. They often prefer you know, broadcasting about conflicts and destruction, famine in Africa. They don't, they don't want to broadcast you know, about uh, development, about democracy, about equality and so on. And uh, mm. I'm sure you heard the fake news that CNN broadcast broadcasted recently about Ethiopia, as if the, yes. the capital 
was you know encircled under the terrorism you know mm. it is unexpected news but what do you say about this when when such international media disseminate the fake news on on you know sovereign country you know is it is a policy is a deliberate policy that uh, they use every tool which they have every institution um to try to take over uh to try to take over countries that want to practice uh, uh true independence uh and they report uh you know um negatively uh about africa they report only famine and the, and the bad things uh they don't report the bad things in their countries uh, when you look at uh, for example chicago many people die in chicago alone than all over africa every year even today you know even yesterday people are dying in chicago of gun violence the united states has the biggest prison population in the world even bigger than china yet china has a bigger population than united states united states has a population a prison population of 2 million 2 million prisoners and half of them are people of african descent they are black so the united states and the western world they do not like black people they do not and this is something which we should say on the top of the roof on top of our voices they do not like black people and that is why we see this blackmail that is why we see this reporting negatively about africa so and i say that we have to reject this their media it is is designed in such a way that they are they want to report negatively about africa china has a prison population of 1.2 million with 1.4 billion people 1.4 billion people as a population the united states with its 300 million people it has 2 million people in prison 2.1 actually million people and half of that is africans people of african descent so if they are not treating our fellow fellow africans in the united states justly how can they come here to africa and tell us that they will treat us justly that they will help us so their media does not report these things it does not report the death in chicago it does not report the discontent in all over the united states it does not report the mistreatment of the african people and people of african descent in the united states they jump and come to africa to tell us what to do but today they have found us when our eyes are open they have found us that we are more intelligent we know what is happening in their countries and we cannot accept this blackmail and today we are saying that as african people we are telling the united states and europe they should go back to the united states and europe and first bring some justice to the african people in the united states they should give reparations for the slavery the united states has not given reparations for the slavery which it did on the african people europe has not given reparations to the african people which it colonized in the caribbean and all over europe and the united states they have not they have carried out genocide canada carried out a genocide on the indigenous people in canada australia carried out a genocide on the australian people the united states carried out a genocide on the indigenous people in the united states and took over that land so we know about them we know more about freedom and independence and liberty more than they do because we africans we fought for this liberty we fought this for this independence against them against their brutality even when they did not want to go from africa we had to force them recently in south africa 1994 we have to push these whites out we have to fight against them to overthrow their brutality so they cannot turn around the same people and come and tell africa how to practice freedom because we know so much about freedom more than them we have fought for freedom they never fought for freedom we are the ones who have fought for our freedom so their media it has it should be made clear it should be made clear in africa and it should be credited discredited 
it should be their media should be discredited in Africa. So all people in Africa should know that this media, this Western media, is trying to blackmail the African people, but it is already discredited in their own countries. Like I said, below 30% of the population in the Western world trust their media. They don't, because they know what how much havoc this their media has caused around the world. They know about the lies which we had done in the 60s in Vietnam. The people know about the lies which we had done in the Korean War. They know about the lies in Iraq, the first Iraq war and the second Iraq war. They know about the lies in Afghanistan. They know about the lies that were done by BBC, Sky News, CNN in Libya, in attacking Libya and Somalia. The people know about these lies. So they cannot lie anymore. They cannot run anywhere. They cannot run to Africa. We have them. We have them and our duty is to expose them using our own African media. Like this TV, what it is doing. This is incredible. This is the type of news we should be watching as African people, not BBC, not CNN. We should expose them so that they can run. They will not have anywhere to run if we continue to expose them. Mr. Kwame Gonza, Director of Media and Publicity of Kwame Nkrumah Ideological Institute, who is also Pan-Africanist, actually young Pan-Africanist. Thank you very much for your time. And dear viewers, this brings us to the end of our edition. And I'm sure you have got uh, constructive pointers from this discussion. Till next time, goodbye.